Sweet sounding words. I, I tell you, they have some words that will turn your head. 
the sales pitch is good, but it's only good for the devil. But I tell you, the sales pitch we need to be listening to is the one that God has in his word. What God has in his word is what we should be listening to. And see, what that will do, if we're listening to the word of God, we're not going to get caught up in the devil's <coughs> sales pitch. Well, we're not going to get caught up in his sales pitch. We're going to be right there looking at God. Because I, I tell you what we want to do, we want to be able to draw ourselves closer to him. And see, that's what we're supposed to be doing is getting closer to God. But if we listen to the sales pitch that the devil has for us, guess what? We're going to go farther away from God. See, I tell you, as, 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 as we look back, look back into Genesis. Look back at the fall of mankind. When we look back at Genesis 3, 1 through 6, where we start, it records the, uh, the first account of temptation in the scripture. It, it describes how Satan tempted Adam and Eve in disobeying God, and therefore re responsible for bringing sin right here into this world. And I'm going to let you know that eating of the fruit caused a problem. Can I say that again? The eating of the fruit caused a problem. Whatever the fruit was. What kind of fruit are you eating? Whatever the fruit was. See, eating it was a clear violation of what the divine prohibition is. See, the seriousness, the seriousness of the lives of Adam and of Eve deliberately, willfully reject God's command. And I'm going to let you know, even today, as we sit there, we, as people, are some things that we have done, that we willfully, willingly sin against the Father. Uh -huh. We rejected yeah. his command. Yeah. Yeah. See, Satan's temptation of Eve began by planting a seed of doubt, a doubt in her mind. And see, that's what he does. He will plant that seed of doubt in the mind to, to move you away from God. Don't put your focus on, the, on God or on God's word. Yeah. And see, Satan may say something like this. You have God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Then notice this, that Satan negatively restated the prohibition. Mm -hmm. And listen to what he's, what he's saying. He's saying that God has made in, uh, in Genesis 2, 16 and 17, he brought, <laughs> I tell you, he brought the sales pitch. She brought the sales pitch of Satan. And this is what happened. She brought the sales pitch and therefore satisfied her desire for the fruit and her hatred for God's command by adding the phrase, neither shall ye touch it. See, when she added a phrase in that it was not in the word of God, then Satan had already tricked her. He she brought the sales pitch. I want to let you know that if, I know there's many of us out there when we went out to a store somewhere in us and somebody was selling something unto us that they had a good pitch and it caught our attention. I want to let you know that when somebody have an excellent sales pitch that everybody has the tendency to want to circle around them and listen to what they got to say. It, 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 it seems to, to draw people to them. I tell you, when they have an excellent sales pitch. Now I'm going to let you know that Satan has an excellent sales pitch. Now he's going to catch you off guard when you're not looking. And see, that's his job. 